Good morning, good morning. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Beautiful temples all around us. This place is just so peaceful, so serene. Look at these massive temples behind us. It was a beautiful night. Incredible experience to be able to go and see some of the Buddhist rituals last night. A nice traditional Buddhist vegetarian dinner with some interesting tofu options, but delicious nonetheless. And now it is officially day two. We're gonna get on the road and see more of Shikoku. Let's go. Today is going to be a big day. And I didn't realize this, however, until well after our first stop of the morning, a historical spot right down the road from where we stayed last night. All right, our first activity on day two is down this unsuspecting street here in the back alleys of Shikoku. And we are going in to try our hands at some dyeing, some indigo dyeing. It's a very popular art here in the region. So we're gonna go inside this beautiful little building and see what we can dye. I'm hoping for maybe a suit or some kind of a necktie or something cool. Let's go see. Look at all this indigo. If you were an indigo dyer in this area back in the day, you were balling. If you did it right, you had a big property, maybe a few employees, and you were selling your garments to the upper class of society. Not to mention, you never had to worry about what color clothes you were gonna wear. All right, the area that we're in right now is actually the old residence of the Indigo Dyer. Oh, and this is a huge sprawling campus. Now it's a museum and they just made it a Japanese heritage site. So they're doing some restorations here, but a sprawling campus. Life was good as an Indigo Dyer back in the day. And they said about the 700s is when it started. And we're gonna go dye some Indigo right now. The Aino Yakata Museum here in Tokushima is the home and factory of one successful indigo dyeing family. And it showcases the traditional process of this fading art form. From the cultivation of the plant, into the fermentation, and all the way through to the actual dyeing of the clothing itself. It is such an honored aspect of Japanese culture that the emperor himself has been here to experience it. And I'm lucky enough to learn firsthand as well. I pick a pattern I want for a bandana and get to work. The designs are dictated by how you arrange the fabric before dunking it into this giant bed of indigo sludge. You let it marinate for a few minutes, wring it out, and repeat the process based on how dark you want the dye to be. From there, it takes a rinse, a dry, and an iron. And just like that, I have my own little piece of Japanese history. Now, this is where the story takes a turn for the unexpected. We make the hour drive into the beautiful Shikoku countryside, transitioning from Tokushima into the Kagawa prefecture. It's here at the Nakano Udon School where we're greeted by two local news stations. At our next location, we got a full-on film crew. Oh man. How about this? I thought that was the first so, time building. Someone alerted the paparazzi. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> All right, our next stop on the adventure, we got ourselves a film crew. Somebody alerted the media, and we're gonna go make some udon. This is the spot. The udon is famous in this region, so we're gonna go inside here and try to make it ourselves, and then hopefully eat as much as possible. Let's go in here. They caught wind of us being in town and are here to follow us around a little bit. That starts with learning how to make udon, the signature dish of this region. And what I thought was gonna be just another sit down lesson, takes a turn as well. We learn about the history, the ingredients, how ratios change with the seasons, all that good stuff. Then our teacher Miss Kumai turns on the music and tells me we must mix and flatten the dough by way of a dance party.
I give it one last flatten with a rolling pin. Learn how to cut the perfect size noodle. Give it a fluff, and that's how you make udon in the most interesting way possible. <laughs> Noodles are cooked perfectly. Those are, are sweet and salty. Dashi is amazing. With some tempura vegetables with that. That was delicious. Well done. We did it. This is really good. Yeah. This After all good. the excitement from lunch, it's time for something a bit more relaxing. And for that, we enter inside the Ritzerine Garden. Dating all the way back to the early 17th century, the property of an old feudal lord is one of the most famous historical gardens in all of Japan. And honestly, it's one of the most beautifully kept patches of landscape I've ever seen. And this garden is said to be one of the most beautiful in all of Japan and is also the largest in Japan at 75 hectares. And these trees are incredible all over the landscape. There's all these different trees that I've never seen before. There's a tree over there with some grass on it. This massive old tree here. It's a beautiful campus. And these incredible old Japanese style architecture buildings here. Really beautiful. And after this, we're coming in here to the tea room. Look at this setup. Are you kidding me? We stop into a tea house for a traditional matcha and just embrace the tranquility. Even with the news crew still following us around, it's hard not to feel completely relaxed here. The port city of Takamatsu is the home of Ritsurin Garden, and where we'll be staying the night. It's the capital of the Kagawa prefecture and very unique in comparison to the more popular Japanese cities you already know. Back in the big city. Back in the big city, all the chaos, the traffic, back to the people. After a beautiful day out in the countryside, now we're gonna go eat some chicken. One aspect of urban life that everyone keeps telling us we have to try is the bone-in braised chicken. So before turning in for the night, we head into Yoridori Midori for dinner, a cozy little izakaya which is said to serve up some of the best bird in town. Now there's two ways you can order your chicken, young or mature. The young ones are juicy and tender, but the mature ones are crispy and really flavorful. You honestly can't go wrong with either. We're at the famous chicken joint downtown. It's just sitting in oil, crunchy bits on the outside. Delicious, almost like chicken thigh, meat on the inside, darker meat. Oh my God. 
in the city. We eat way too much chicken, drink a few highballs, and stick around for the evening news, where they do some crazy story about this American guy exploring Shikoku. アメリカ人のギャレス I think when so many people they think about uh, Japan, they think about Tokyo and chaos and uh, noise and so many people. But then you look at a place so tranquil and relaxing like this, it's good to show the contrast, the different sides of Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, day in the life of making udon noodles.